Hi, my name is Margaret Chirino and I am from Staten Island, New York. At 17, I became pregnant. The father said he was not ready to be a father. Little did we know he already was. I went to the doctor. I was destroyed, but he told me there was nothing to be upset about. It was just a blob of cells. An abortion would scrape them out. I ignored my heart, which was telling me different. But I didn't think I could take care of a child. I was afraid to tell my father and afraid to run away. Told myself if it was legal, it couldn't be bad, ignorantly trusting our government. So I had the abortion. On that day, the boyfriend dropped me off at the clinic. I was crying, but told I was overreacting. When they put me on that surgical table, I felt I was going to die. When I woke up, I was in intense pain, bleeding terribly. I felt ashamed and I was still in fear. I knew I did something horrible, but there was no turning back. It could never be undone. I now had to hide it from the rest of my life. I felt like I was a failure and I was separated from God. I went from being a normal teenager to living in darkness. My zest for life was gone. I eventually married. I quickly became pregnant and followed the development of this child. I realized that at 12 weeks gestation, my aborted child was a fully developed, only tiny. She had tiny eyes and ears, arms and legs, and a heart that was broken. My adorable baby had suffered the pain of being torn apart. That doctor had lied to me that abortion had brutally killed my baby, not a sack of cells, right there in my own body, which should have been the safest place in the world. I had no recourse and still had to hide my feelings. I could never talk about the shame of mine, still feeling it was all my fault. That abortion had a snowballing negative effect on my life for many years. Because of it, I had a very low self-esteem and felt worthless. My marriage became abusive and eventually violent. Deep down, I felt I deserved it. I was afraid of God and never felt forgiven, even though I confessed many times. I became an overprotective mother, always afraid something bad would happen to my children. My healing started when my mother became terminally ill and I begged God to help her. In helping her, he helped me too. He taught me through St. Faustina about his infinite mercy. Although our sins be as scarlet, he will forgive a contrite heart, is what he said. The biggest miracle happens in the confessional, that we must trust in his mercy and that I also had to forgive. He led me to a Rachel's retreat I learned I was allowed to grieve for my child. I named my baby Hope and gave her a spiritual burial in hopes of replacing her being thrown in the trash. Although a day doesn't go by that I don't miss my child, I can have her in my heart, talk about her, grieve for her, and know that she knows that I would never have done this had I been given the truth. <laughs> I finally got the strength to divorce my abusive husband. After winning a custody battle in the courts, he managed to brainwash my three living children against me, and I was without them for many years. One day, my daughter, Kristen, called me. She was 17 and pregnant, and was being forced to have an abortion. She wanted to come back to me. I gladly took her in and protected her and my grandchild from abortion. She graduated high school five months pregnant. Megan is now nine and a great blessing. I shudder to think what almost happened to her. With support from me and my father, who years before I was afraid of, and help from a free daycare for unwed moms going to school, she graduated college and is now an eighth grade teacher, supporting herself and her child. With a little love and trusting God, it can be done. And now, through the grace of God, I work for Priests for Life as an assistant to Father Frank and Janet Marana, helping them and our great team to educate the world and fight to end abortion. I can tell you that abortion is not health care. It results in death of one kind or another for everybody involved. And that is why I am silent no more.